The Gallery of South Asian Art at the Michael C. Carlos Museum includes Hindu, Buddhist, and Jain sculptures from India, Tibet, and Nepal. As you enter the gallery, you're greeted by the Hindu deity, the elephant-headed Ganesh, the Lord of New Beginnings and the remover of obstacles. It was important that we put Ganesh at the entrance to the galleries because this is the way it would be in a Hindu temple. So whether you're entering a Shiva temple or a Vishnu temple, you're likely to find Ganesh at the very beginning. In fact, you can find Ganesh, the remover of obstacles on the dashboards of taxi cabs and near the cash registers of Indian businesses. One of the things we've been most excited about in this new gallery renovation is the installation of these drawers which allow us to both protect our Indian paintings from the light, but yet make them more accessible to the university and to the public. In this first drawer, we see the beginning of the great Indian epic, the Ramayana. Ram is being led to his father's palace where he will learn that he is going to be king. But one of his father's wives was granted a boon and she took advantage of that boon and demanded that her son become king instead of Rama. And so Ram is banished to the forest for 14 years. And this next painting pictures him preparing for departure to the forest. He sits with his wife Sita while his brother Lakshmana mats his hair and then they take a boat um, as they begin their exile into the forest. And here you see them in the forest. And this beautiful painting shows us the end of the story where Ram returns to Ayodhya and is crowned king after 14 years. Sita is seated next to him, his brothers stand behind, and you can also see Hanuman, Hanuman the monkey god, and also the king of the bear army, and others who have supported Ram during this time. The forest where he was exiled is behind him and he looks forward uh, to Iodia. This is one of my favorite sculptures in the museum. It represents Vishnu resting on the cosmic ocean in between the cycles of time. He rests on the body of a giant snake and though the hoods of the serpent are missing, you can trace the wonderful carved body of the snake. We recognize Vishnu by his mace and his conch shell, but in this case they hang limp because he is asleep. His feet are being pressed by his consort Lakshmi, but out of his navel comes a lotus, and seated on that lotus is Brahma, the creator god, who is about to wake Vishnu up and tell him that he must descend to earth in order to restore cosmic balance. Vishnu descends to earth multiple times in the form of avatars. And in fact, the word avatar means descend in Sanskrit. One of my favorite things about our new drawers is that this image is a painting that depicts exactly the same subject as we see in the sculpture right above it. So you see the many heads of Seisha, the serpent. Seisha means that which remains. And so in between the cycles of time, Seisha remains. And you can see as we did in the sculpture, here is uh, Vishnu's mace and his conch shell resting at his side. Krishna is also an avatar of Vishnu. And this beautiful painting depicts a scene from the life of Krishna. Throughout Krishna's existence, his divinity, the fact that he is God, is revealed and then hidden, and revealed and then hidden. And this is a famous story where that happens. Krishna and his friends are playing on the riverbank next to the Yamuna River, and the hundred-headed snake god, Kalya, has found his way into that river, and his venom is poisoning the river. And you can see the 
cows here on the riverbanks are dying. Krishna dives into the water and a battle ensues between he and Kalia, and he comes out of the water dancing on the head of the snake, victorious, and through that dancing, his divinity as God is revealed. And here you see the beautiful snake wives. You can see their snake bodies under the water. And each of them offer to Krishna lotus, jewels, and other gifts asking for his mercy. And Krishna is a merciful God. And so instead of dispatching Kalia, he guides him into the ocean where his venom cannot do any more damage because Krishna understands that Kalia is just doing what snakes do. And so he shows himself as a merciful God. This image of Krishna dancing can also be seen in this wonderful Chola bronze. Um, you see Krishna with his foot raised um, and his hand in a gesture of blessing. And again, it's this image of dance in which his divinity is revealed. This wall of the gallery features Buddhist works from India, Tibet, and Nepal. We have the Buddha, we have the Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva of Compassion, and this wonderful Tibetan Buddha, a Shakyamuni Buddha, with his hand in the touching of the earth gesture. And we know that the Buddha did not achieve enlightenment in one lifetime. In fact, it was three incalculable eons before he reached enlightenment. And so he reaches down and asks the, the earth, he reaches down and asks the earth to witness his enlightenment because the earth is the only thing that's been around long enough to witness such an event. This is the type of statue that would appear on a Buddhist altar in a monastery or temple. And we recognize the Buddha by his elongated ears, showing that he has given up the wealth of a prince. We recognize him by his top knot that shows his wisdom, his meditative position, his robes of a monk, his downcast eyes, and seated on a lotus throne. These two smaller statues are the type that Buddhist practitioners would have in a home shrine. And we have, again, Shakyamuni Buddha in the earth-touching gesture, and Maitreya, the future Buddha, also known as the loving one. Maitreya wears the elaborate robes, crown, and jewels of a celestial bodhisattva. Unlike the Buddha who wears the robes of a monk, Maitreya, the future Buddha, is a celestial bodhisattva and is richly attired in the robes of a celestial being, a future Buddha. One of the great things about the renovation is that we were able to remove a wall and add a little bit more space and fill that space with images of powerful goddesses. We have Peldin Lamu, the protector goddess of Tibet, and we have Durga, and we have a fierce village goddess. The story of Dorga is well known. This sculpture depicts Dorga defeating the buffalo demon Maisha. Maisha is a demon, and he's a very devoted demon. He has performed all the correct rituals and shown respect to the gods, so they've given him a boon. And that boon is that he cannot be killed by man nor god. And then Maisha starts getting a little full of himself and terrorizing the countryside, and the gods are helpless because they've given him this boon. So they channel all of their energy together and they create the goddess. And so here we see the powerful goddess Dorga, and she not only has all of the power of the gods, but she also has their weapons. We see her drawing a bow from her quiver that she would put into this bow, and then she has Vishnu's disc, and you see she is um, actually stabbing Maisha with Shiva's trident. And though this is actually a scene of violence, if you look closely at the goddess's face and the face of the demon, they're both quite calm and pacific. 
And this is because to be killed by a goddess is actually to be released from the endless cycle of samsara. And so Maisha looks up at her in this moment of grace. Though every faculty members and a PhD student in the graduate division of religion, Aditya Chaturverdi, did a lot of research to give new interpretations to some of the objects, there were some questions we couldn't answer. We know this is a fierce goddess because she holds a dagger and a skull, she has fangs, but we don't actually know who she is. And so research continues. The museum is not just a static place that holds treasures, but it's a place where active scholarship is always occurring. This is my favorite painting in the collection. It depicts Shiva seated on a lotus, a thousand petal lotus, and we recognize Shiva because he has his snake wrapped around his neck, he wears a tiger skin, and he has a crescent moon in his head. To his right, we see renunciates to remind us of Shiva's detachment from the world. These are the people with whom he meditates in the mountains. And on his right, his wife Parvati, to remind us of his engagement with the world. And this painting of Shiva was put in conversation with the Shiva Lingam. So we have Shiva in his iconic form, his anthropomorphized form, and Shiva in his aniconic form. And this was one of the most fun pieces for the installation. Um, this Shiva Lingam has four faces, and the faces, it's important that they face in the right direction. And so, Aditya brought his iPhone and we used the compass to make sure that the face that was supposed to face north actually faced north to show respect for the tradition. The galleries were renovated in the summer of 2021 and museum staff worked with a group of faculty in the Department of Religion to thoughtfully reorganize the collections and place them in conversation with one another. So we were able to put the avatars of Vishnu in the drawers right under the sculpture of Vishnu. We were able to have the painting of Krishna in the drawer speak to the sculpture of Krishna here. We were able to put three fierce goddesses in relationship to one another.